Okay. I'll let them know we're getting one. Um, I can you see that? Sure. All right. You guys hear me down there? Yep. All right. We're going to get started here today, guys. So um, we have a very special guest today, Vivlia. Uh, she's, a, um, she's an EAP counselor, mm -hmm. and um, she'll be kind of walking us through uh, um, humor and mental health and how those two can kind of help out each other a little bit. Yes. So further ado. Thank you, Adam. All right, so just a quick thing about EAP, just always want to remind you that it's a benefit available to you and your immediate fa family members for assessment, short-term counseling, and referral. So any kind of workplace or personal concern that you might have that you would see a counselor for, you know, you're drinking too much, you have too much stress, your kids are brats, you're fighting with your spouse, whatever it is, EAP is a free and confidential resource for you. And our closest office here in Wisconsin Rapids is on 8th Street South by Clo uh, Culver's. But we also have um, offices in Marshfield, Wausau, Plover, all over the place. And you can call us Monday through Friday um, during business hours and talk to a counselor right away on the phone or just call to schedule an appointment, whatever works for you. Any questions about EAP? All right, so then we'll go ahead and get started. Today we're talking about health and humor and why it's good to laugh a little bit. Not funny or <laughs> no reaction? I thought this was hilarious. <laughs> All right, so the laughing challenge. For the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be showing you some funny things that I found on Pinterest and YouTube and things like that. So the challenge is to tally how many times you laugh. And I want to let you know that more is better. It's not like you have to try to stifle the laughter. It's okay to laugh, and that's what this training's all about today. How about this one? <laughs> Watch it again. See the cop in the back? I think he's hilarious. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. So there are many ways to be well, and this is what your handout has, and you can take notes on there if you want to. And we're going to be talking specifically about each one of these areas, and we're going to be, um, and these are taken from like the wellness wheel or the dimensions of wellness. Have you seen that before? So this is in all the dimensions of wellness. Um, they, it also includes spiritual, occupational, um, trying to think off the top of my head, environmental, financial, and really humor can touch all of those things. But these are the primary ones that we're going to be talking about today that humor really impacts. So the physical of mental illness, the dreaded stress response. And if you've ever been in any of my trainings before, you've probably heard me talk about the stress response because it's a really important thing for people to be aware of and know how to manage because it affects so many areas of our life. So the stress response, this you know, scientific term for it is sympathetic nervous system, and that's that fight or flight response that your body goes into when, you're, when you believe that you're under some kind of threat or attack. So the most extreme example of this is when you're in a near-miss car accident, and maybe the deer jumps out in front of the car and you slam on the brakes and the deer trots away, it's fine, but you're like, Oh my gosh, I just saw my life flash before my eyes. Like, you're, you know, you're all shaken up. You got that adrenaline and the cortisol running through your body. Has anybody experienced that before? Yeah, we all have. But what we don't recognize is that we are experiencing that stress response all the time throughout the day. You know, your mother in law tells you you look fat, and you get that stress response. Or your boss says, come see me, and you're like, oh, the stress response. Right? It's happening all the time, but in just much lower doses. And so, what does that do to us? Well, we know that when we get into that sympathetic nervous system state, um, adrenaline and cortisol and upper type uh, chemicals get released into our body and it puts us in that fight or flight mode so a lot of our body systems shut down so our immunity for one thing is suppressed because your body doesn't care if it can fight off germs if it thinks you're going to die in five minutes right fighting off germs isn't the priority so your immunity gets suppressed your digestion stops it doesn't matter if you digest your breakfast tomorrow or from this morning if you're going to be dead in five minutes so we don't need to worry about that so the blood rushes from the, your core out to your extremities your digestion slows down and then um, the, your fight or flight response puts you in a very emotional reaction where you're just think, you know, reacting automatically to the situation rather than, hmm, what would be the next step in this process? Should I fight this or should I run? You know, you're not thinking logically. You're just reacting out of the core centers of your brain, your limbic system. Um, and so all these things are going on. And when that happens chronically or long term, we have chronic stress, um, it creates a very acidic, 
body chemistry because that cortisol and all that stuff that's you know very acidic chemicals in your body all the time which is good for short bursts but not for long-term situations and so your body chemistry becomes very acidic and it causes a lot of problems I mean imagine washing your hands with acid <laughs> eventually over time things are gonna wear out and break down and that's what's happening internally your body might feel more pain your joints are inflamed your again problems with your digestive tract ulcers migraines headaches tension all kinds of things and then the GI problems when your food is not being digested properly and in the right time frame that food just sits in your guts and it starts to rot and ferment and you can imagine that that's probably not very good for your body also high levels of cortisol is very stimulating so at night you go to bed and your eyes are wide open and you're just like wide awake right or maybe you can fall asleep your melatonin is getting you into that sleep state but then throughout the night you're waking up you have a lot of restless sleep a lot of times that be is because your cortisol levels are too high and ultimately it just leads to a lot of disease I mean, we can all see that how that would be right that's really no mystery there but laughter is an excellent antidote um, it lowers those stress hormones. When you can laugh about things, it takes you out of that sympathetic nervous system or that stress response and it puts you into the parasympathetic one. So your adrenaline and your cortisol levels lower. It increases that rest, digest, rejuvenate hormones, which is the antithesis to the sympathetic nervous state. That's called the parasympathetic nervous state, which is that rest, digest, and rejuvenate. This is the state that we want to be in most of the time. This is a healthy state where we can you know, I digest our food, our immune system's working properly, all that stuff. And so when we laugh, we're increasing those feel-good hormones, the endorphins, the AC, HCG. Um, it decreases the acidity in our body. It boosts digestion and promotes sleep and concentration. So we can see that it's really an antidote to stress in so many ways. How about this? <laughs> Watch it again. They tied together or what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I don't care how old I am, hold my shoes. Two story bouncy house, anybody in for that? I totally am. <laughs> All right, so we talked about the physical benefits of laughter, and not just, you know, it reduces the stress and, and chemicals and stuff. That's a really important thing, but it also tightens your stomach muscles, and it gives your body a little workout when you have those really big belly laughs. And your stomach muscles are so important to keep everything in line. In fact, I'm really learning about that now as I'm in physical therapy because I was getting chiropractic adjustments and everything would look straight but then two days later it'd be you know misaligned again so she said you need some physical therapy and really all, all we're doing is just strengthening my core muscles right so if I would just laugh more and have some of those big belly laughs I wouldn't have to work so hard at my physical therapy probably all right so that's the physical component of why laughter is good for us now we're going to talk about the intellectual benefits of laughter Humor improves cognition, and research has demonstrated that this is true. Humor activates the brain's dopamine reward system. So dopamine is the chemical in our brain that helps us feel pleasure. So when you take a bite of a you know, piece of chocolate cake or something, you go, ah, that feels good, I like that. It's your dopamine probably telling you that that's a good piece of chocolate cake. Dopamine is important for motivation and memory. And humor used correctly can be an effective intervention to improve retention in students from kindergarten all the way through college. So humor is not age limited and who benefits from it? Everybody benefits from it. Uh, and it helps to, like, like it says, improve retention and learning. So I know in my trainings, I'm not a very funny person. I don't open my trainings with jokes like some public speakers do because people don't laugh at my jokes. But finding ways to make people laugh is a great way to, to engage them in what I'm going to tell them, and it opens their mind for learning. And the more that they laugh, the more likely they are to learn the material. So that's a really helpful piece of information if you're a teacher of any kind. Make your students laugh. How about this one? That guy probably needs a little work on his intellectual wellness, right? <laughs> Oops. And honestly, I look at that and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so something I would do. <laughs> do you get it? So this is a car, like the heat vent on the car, and closed or open, but email and bacon in the car. 
So <laughs> humor cures boredom. How many of you have used YouTube in moments of bored desperation? Like, please just entertain me or Pinterest or whatever. How many of you have done that? Yeah, I've done that too. And YouTube is great because, you know, you find one video and you really like it and then it's got all those suggestions on the side. So you can just keep going and going. You can waste a lot of time on YouTube, as I'm sure many of you know. So humor introduces us to novel situations. You know, we think of things in a new way that we've never thought of them before. Like going back here, email and bacon. I never would have thought of that, but oh, okay, opened my mind to that a little bit. Um, it expands our perspectives and stretches our imaginations. Like just thinking about what it would be like in, in that two-story bouncy house. That's something I never would have considered without that little meme. So this is good for your brain. So what are some of your favorite funny videos that you've seen on YouTube or anything that comes to mind? Like, oh yeah, when I'm having a bad day, this is what I go to. Yes. Yeah, my kids watch those a lot. Like cats in the toilet or whatever. <laughs> Any other ones? No? Quiet group. Okay. Well, I have to flip over to the internet here, but we're going to watch one of my favorite ones that my family brings up a lot. That's not it. Where is it? Mm. Okay, I'll load it again. Copy. Mm. Do we have sound? It was working. What happened? Here we go. Okay. Who's that? Does anybody know what's going on here? Is it like feedback? It's like an alien. <laughs> Didn't happen before. No, it didn't. <laughs> we are muted on this end. Huh. I don't know where that echo's coming from. Do you want to give it a go? All right, we'll try it. If it's terrible, we'll shut it off. All right, here we go. I think maybe not. <laughs> what if I pulled this out? All right. Still making the noise. All right, let's try now. Now it's not working. <laughs> huh. Oh, here we go. All right. Oh, and it's still making that noise. Okay, so we're going to scratch the video, but we'll just talk about it, I guess. <laughs> um, has anybody seen Ain't Nobody Got Time for That? Okay, a few people of you have. I strongly suggest that you go to YouTube and watch it because it's hilarious. It's about this woman. You saw her on the screen, Sweet Brown. That's her real name. And uh, there was a, a fire in her apartment building and so the news crew was interviewing her about you know how she smelled the fire and stuff and she's just hilarious as she talks about um, you know I thought somebody was barbecuing and I grabbed my shoes and I ran for my life Jesus I ran and I got bronchitis ain't nobody got time for that and then somebody made like a auto-tune song out of ain't nobody got time for that and it's just it's hilarious and it's funny and 
my kids watch it, I watch it, we laugh about it all the time. And so now when, you know, my kids are messing with me or being brats or whatever, I just say, ain't nobody got time for that. And they will know what I'm talking about. And it just makes us bust into laughter. Doesn't matter what's going on. Ain't nobody got time for that. And we all laugh. So using things like that, that it's really funny to watch, but then incorporating it into your life and sh kind of having that inside joke with people can be really helpful intellectually, relationally, in a lot of ways. So does that spur any ideas of things that, yeah, we have some things like that, YouTube or jokes or anything? Anybody want to share them? Sometimes I think about when <laughs> yeah. Any other ones? No? Okay. So it's good for us physically, intellectually, and also relationally. Humor helps relationships. Research, research has shown that having a sense of humor is important, but making each other laugh is key. And jokes have to be funny to both of you. Now, we've seen relationship situations. In fact, I do a lot of marital counseling on situations where um, a spouse is thinking that they're being funny, but they're really making degrading remarks towards their partner. And so maybe in a group setting and everybody's laughing except this part, the partner who's the butt of the joke and they don't think it's funny and then they go home and there's a fight later and things like that. We've all seen that. And so humor is important, but how you use humor is very, very important. And so when you're use humor, using humor as a couple or in a relationship, it can be very beneficial and bring people together. In fact, when we laugh, our frontal cortex is like, lining up with other people. I know that's brain science stuff, but the front of your brain is the part of your brain that makes you empathetic and, um, and helps you to understand other people's emotions. And so when you're laughing, your frontal cortex is working to try to match the, the, um, the I guess, the demeanor of the other person, right, in a very positive way. That also works in a negative way, too. When somebody's really angry and you find yourself getting angry, that's your frontal cortex trying to make you match with them. So matching in, in good, positive, healthy, fun ways is much better than angry, negative ways. But how you laugh together is really important. So make sure that your jokes are funny to both of you. And some people can use self-deprecating or, you know, poking fun at their partner, and that's fine in the relationship, but there are some relationships where it's just is really not fine, so don't do it. Relationship satisfaction is strongly related to the humor couples create together. So here, I love this one. Me, everything okay, sir? May I help you? Awesome old man. I'm fine, just waiting for my wife to come out so I can spook her. <laughs> okay, now think about that. If she comes out and he spooks her and she goes, oh, Leonard, why do you always do that to me, you fool? And she lovingly slaps him on the arm and they're both kind of laughing about it. You know, great, that's a, the thing that brought them together. But if she comes out and he spooks her and she starts crying and says, Leonard, I told you not to do that to me anymore. I hate that. That's going to bring them apart, right? So a good example of that. So the relational benefits of laughter, most laughter does not come from listening to jokes. It comes from spending time with family and friends. That's how those inside jokes happen and those little quirky things that people can laugh about. And finding ways to laugh about situations that would otherwise be irritating to you can be really, really helpful in creating stronger bonds and relationships. And listening to kids. Oh my gosh, they're hilarious. Does anybody have any like examples of family jokes or kid things that you've heard them say? No? Do you ever listen to kids talk? <laughs> they come up with the craziest things. Of course, for now that I'm on the spot, I can't think of any examples either. But I have a two-year-old, and she's just full of funny little peccadillos. And oh my gosh, it was the cutest thing. The other day, we were at the library. She's just two. She turned two in December. And we were at the library, and she ran in front of somebody. And she turned around, and she goes, excuse me. And then she kept running. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. And she's got great manners, too. <laughs> so spending time with kids can be really lighthearted and fun. Relational benefits of laughter. It attracts others to us. People are attracted to happy people. They are really turned off by grumpy people. Now, sometimes it's not fair that people have this, you know, that sourpuss kind of a face because they're very intellectual or they think really hard. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're grumpy or angry people, but they just have that demeanor. And research shows that we are not attracted to that. We are attracted to the people who have smiles in their eyes, right? And not only that, but how you hold your face most of the day are the wrinkles that you're going to form as you get older. 
So do you know like the crabby looking old people who are just always scowling because that's the face that they've had pretty much their whole life. And then think of people who have smiled their whole life and they have like the laugh lines around their face and you know around their chin. So even when they're not smiling it looks like they are. Does anybody think of an example of somebody who has that like happy face all the time? Do you know anybody like that? No? Oh, so you're going to have the grubby face. Like, oh. <laughs> but like Robin Williams is an example that I think of, right? He just always has that, well, had that happy face. My boss is another one that she smiles all the time. And even when she's not smiling, it looks like she is. So really think about that for yourself. As you get older, do you want grumpy face or do you want happy face? That's another thing that my two-year-old and I do. Mad face, happy face. But think about how you want the wrinkles to form on your face as you get older and really be mindful about holding your face in that position. And not only that, but when you practice smiling, it makes your, it lifts your mood. It helps you to feel better, right? So we can walk around and, and have this, you know, scowl on our face and that may or may not affect our mood. But if we m consciously and mindfully pull our muscles back in our face and, and put our demeanor into a smiling uh, face, your mood says, oh, I guess we're happy now, and it automatically lifts your mood a little bit. So just being mindful about those simple things that you can do to bring some joy into your life. So laughter attracts others to us. It also strengthens relationships, as we talked about, creating that humor together, those inside jokes that nobody else understands. It enhances teamwork. The team who laughs together can do anything together, right? It's so much better to be on a team of people who can j laugh and joke around, and you don't always have to like be watching your back and oh, I don't want to say the wrong thing, and versus a team where people are negative and mean and cutting people down. So finding ways to bring humor and lightheartedness into your team can do a lot, not just for your team, but for your organization. Think of a culture where the culture of the organization is lighthearted and happy. I don't know if that is true here or not, but I've been in some companies where that's clearly not the culture. You walk in and you can just feel the tension. Like, how do people come to work here every day? And then there are other companies that I go into and I'm like, wow, I want to work here. This is awesome. So do your part in bringing that to your team and for yourself and for everybody. And then laughter also diffuses conflict. When somebody is just seething mad and the other person is kind of standing back watching this and maybe they just kind of crack a little smile. And pretty soon the person who's seething mad is like, this is not funny. And you're like, you're right, it's not funny. And they're like, it's really not funny and they start to crack a smile and pretty soon you're both kind of laughing about a situation that could have turned really ugly. Um, now that doesn't always work but it often works because remember our frontal cortex is trying to match us with the person across from us so your brain is trying to tell you be really angry because he's angry but if you change the tone of that situation you say no I'm not gonna be angry I'm gonna be happy that person's frontal cortex is saying you shouldn't be angry you should be happy right so you can influence other people with your happy face um, but it doesn't always work. My nine-year-old, she had a really rough year last year and she threw a lot of tantrums and I thought it was hilarious to mock her when she was having these tantrums and she'd be like, I don't want to do that. And of course I would go, but you have to. And she'd be like, it's not funny. And we would just keep going on like that. And I'm like practically rolling on the floor because I think it's hilarious. And she did not find it funny at all. So sometimes people are accepting of that humor and sometimes they're not. But in either case, I was okay with the situation, right? I wasn't getting caught up into that drama and the negativity because that tends to be my tendency. But I find when I bring humor into the situation, really it's self-protective and often it helps the other person too. So sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. But if nothing else, it helps me. Anybody else use humor to diffuse conflict? Yeah. Any good examples of when you've done it and it's worked or not worked? No? Quiet group. We're going to get done real fast today. <laughs> oh, I love this one. Could you imagine being at Disney World and riding the Dumbo thing with Darth Vader? <laughs> Can't even imagine that, right? Humor expands our minds. <laughs> All right, so we talked about the physical benefits, how it reduces our stress, it helps us sleep better, helps us feel better, cures disease even. Um, intellectual benefits, how it expands our mind and helps us to think of um, different ideas and also 
uh, increases dopamine, which aids in learning and retention. We talked about the relational benefits, how it brings people together and diffuses conflict. And lastly, we're going to talk about the emotional benefits of laughter. So here more decrease, I just said all that. Decreases stress, <coughs> increases rest, right, digest, and rejuvenate, activates dopamine, strengthens relationships. So how would you feel if you could take a drug with all these benefits and no side effects? Yeah, we all want that pill, right? But it doesn't come in pill form. It's just laughter. And if you could take that pill, you would feel like this guy. How about this one? Dear Julian, have a great day. Love, Mom. I will not. <laughs> Wait, do you have any Julians in your life? Uh-huh. My husband's a Julian. Doesn't matter how happy I am, there is something wrong with it, and it's not a good day. He even gets mad about sunshine because it gets in his eyes and he doesn't like it, right? Anything that he does is, is negative. He just has that personality where he just looks to the negative, right? I don't hold that against him anymore. It's just who he is. But sometimes it's hard not to get sucked into that negativity with people like Julian and my husband. So just remember, you have to mindfully sometimes incorporate humor into our lives. And sometimes people are naturally good at this, like comedians and class clown kind of people, you know, they're naturally good at it. So look to them as your role models. Like, okay, what would they do in this situation? Or how would they you know, make light of this or find the silver lining, whatever. And don't get sucked into the Julians of the world. The emotional benefits of laughter adds joy and zest to life. Obviously, that's a no-brainer. Eases anxiety and tension. We talked about that stress response, which is closely related to anxiety and tension. Relieves stress, improves mood, strengthens resilience. When you laugh more, remember, you're, it's engaging your immune system again. It helps you to overcome obstacles more easily. It, it, Research finds that optimistic people live longer, happier, and healthier lives than people who are pessimistic. So that resilience, you know, you can get through anything if you have the right attitude. In fact, I think a Holocaust survivor, was it Victor Frankl who said something like that about attitude? You can't choose, but you can choose your attitude. I don't know. I should look that up. How about this one? He met Iron Man out of costume. Look at his face. <laughs> but some of you might say, but I'm not that funny. And that's okay. You don't have to be a funny person to reap the benefits of laughter. I, I, I'm not. I just can't create humor out of anything in most instances. Um, but ability to create humor is not correlated to well-being. You don't have to be a funny f person to reap the benefits of laughter. The way people use humor matters more. So again, looking on YouTube, laughing when somebody's uh, showing you their angry face, um, you know, watching funny movies. I don't know if any of you have seen The Emperor's New Groove. It's a kid's movie, and I just think it's hilarious. And my husband's like, I just don't get you. Why is that funny to you? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just funny. Expand your sense of humor. Here's some tips on things you can do. Look for humor every single day. Feed your soul with humor. Laugh often. Even if you don't feel like laughing, just try to generate the, you know, the emotions of laughing. And actually there's like therapy groups for laughing now where people just come together and they like practice laughing and they found that there's been a lot of benefits. Even if they're feeling crappy and things suck, just practice laughing and, and you'll get the benefits. Observe infants, children, and puppies. I love puppies and kids. Hang around lighthearted people. I know that we can't always, you know, shut the door to those negative people. They're everywhere. They're in our family. They're in our work group, whatever. But as much as you can, try to, you know, put a divider between you and them. Or if they're bringing negativity to you, just say, you know, I don't have to respond to that. I'm not investing energy in that. I'm I'm not paying any attention to that negativity. And attract yourself to people who bring that positivity and that life to you. Avoid news, entertainment, or people that cause distress. I quit watching the news a long time ago. And sure, I'm usually the last to know about things going on in the world, but I'm a really happy person, and I wouldn't trade that. So just pay attention to even the media and the shows that you watch and the music that you listen to. What kind of messages are you taking into yourself? And is there a way that you can shut some of that out? You just don't need it. And ultimately, just lighten up. Don't take things so seriously. <laughs> Him? No, he doesn't want a treat. He says I can have two. <laughs> so how'd you do on the laugh challenge? Will you be getting some of those great physical, relational, intellectual, and emotional benefits today? Yeah? Good. I found this in a Michael's craft store. 
Help me, wife won't leave. <laughs> Who does that? My son's best friend. Him and his wife will go into Michael's and he'll do that all the time. <laughs> All right, that's all I got. Has anybody got any really good jokes that you can share with us to make us laugh a little bit? I told you my jokes aren't funny. No? Here's one. Okay, so my cousin, he's got autism, right? And uh, he told me this joke that he thought was hilarious. Knock, knock. Pine. Pine apple. And then he just busted out laughing and like fell on the floor. <laughs> So now, whenever I'm having a bad day, I'm like, knock, knock, pine, apple. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. We did get done a little bit early. I hope that's okay. Uh, call EAP if there's anything we can do for you, and have a great rest of your day. You. You're welcome. <laughs> and don't forget to check out Ain't Nobody Got Time for That. <laughs>